Chapter 7, Conic Sections. So a conic section is a curve determined by the intersection of a plane with a cone. You can see the pictures below. Um, it makes several different shapes, but the three conic sections um, are the parabola, the ellipse, and this new shape that maybe we haven't heard of is called a hyperbola. Um, a circle is also a special case. You can see that below, but we've already covered circles. So these are my like double cones. Um, and what we're going to do is we're basically taking a plane. A plane is like a piece of paper. And then we're seeing where they intersect. And so if I make a diagonal slice, it makes this ellipse. A horizontal slice, we're going to skip this because we've covered circles, but it makes a nice perfect circle. It's a special case of an ellipse. Um, and then what might be new is this thing called a hyperbola. So if we do this really deep vertical slice and go through both cones, it intersects twice and kind of makes this double parabola-like shape. And then a vertical slice that's not as deep and only goes through one part makes what's called a parabola. So we've seen parabolas before, we're just gonna look at them a little bit differently. So we're gonna look at some new features of parabolas that maybe we've never seen before. So let's jump into 7-1. So 7-1, the parabola. So a parabola is the set of all points in a plane which are equidistant, that means the same distance, from a fixed line called the directrix, that's the blue line below the curve, so it's below the parabola, and a fixed point called the focus. And you'll see the focus is kind of like inside the parabola. So if I take any point on the curve, and I draw a line to the focus, and I draw a perpendicular line to the directrix, they're the same length. If I pick another point, I draw a line to the focus. It's different than before, um, but I draw a line from that same point to the directrix. Those two pieces are the same exact length. So this is a really special property about parabolas, um, which allow it to have some nice properties in like engineering and science that we'll briefly talk about. So let's look at a new way of looking at parabolas. So we learned that a parabola is like y equals x squared opens up, right? It might have some coefficients or some shifts. We're going to kind of just change the format, but it's still the same graph. So rather than saying y equals x squared, um, we're going to say x squared equals, so just swapping the sides. And then we're going to put a coefficient, right? We could technically have a coefficient outside of x. We're just going to put the coefficient in front of y instead. So it's a different coefficient. And we're going to call the coefficient for cy, because um, c has a very special property. So it's just a parabola with a coefficient. We're just using different letters. The vertex is at 0, 0. So that's either the lowest point or the highest point, depending if it opens up or down. It'll open up when c is positive. It'll open down when c is negative. And then we like this coefficient of c because c is what the focus is. So that's that special point. Is that 0c or 0c, depending if c is positive or negative? Positive, it's above the curve. Negative, it's below the curve. And the directrix is just exactly the opposite. It's an equal distance, so it'll be negative c. So it'll be above or below the curve. It'll be opposite of the focus. So let's find the equation of a parabola using these new properties. And then we can um, see how graphing works when we take it from this approach. So let's find the equation of a parabola with vertex 0, 0 and focus 0, 3. So what this tells me is a parabola looks like x squared equals 4cy. And since the focus is 0, 3, we know c is equal to 3. So we can actually find this equation super quickly. So x squared is equal to 4 times 3 times y. x squared equals 12y. And that's it. We'll graph it in a second. So
So look at the note. We have any vertically oriented parabola. Vertically oriented just means it goes up or down, not sideways. We'll always satisfy the ordered pairs negative 2c, comma c, and 2c, comma c. Why is this true? So let's check that it's true. x squared equals 4cy. So let's plug in these points. Negative 2c for x squared equals 4c times c for y. And it looks like we get 4c squared equals 4c squared. So that's a point. What about 2c squared equals 4c times c? Plugging in the second point, we still get 4c squared equals 4c squared. Cool. So let's actually graph example one before we move on, just so we can see these new properties. So we know the vertex is 0, 0. We know this new thing called the focus is at 0, 3, which means the directrix is the opposite. So the directrix will be at negative 3. So y equals negative 3. They're just opposites of each other. And then before I graph, right, I don't know if it's this steep or this steep. That's why I'm going to find these two points that I mentioned below. So let's find those two points. So negative 2cc gives me negative 2 times 3, 3. So one of the points will be negative 6, 3. And then they're just opposites of each other. So 2cc will be positive 6 and 3. And that has to do with symmetry in the parabola as well. And so we'll go ahead and plot those negative 6, 3, and 6, 3, and those will make my parabola. Now I can get the steepness a little bit better. So let's graph one more. Um, you'll notice that those two points are in the same line as the focus, so I'll talk about that in a second. So that's called the focal chord. So we have the focus, we'll have a chord or like a little line that goes through the focus and touches the parabola. And so the focal chord will always have those endpoints that I just talked about, 2cc and negative 2cc. And then the length of that would be 4c. So why is the length 4c? Because it's 2c plus 2c and we get 4c. Absolute value because c might be positive or negative. So let's find the focus and directrix of a parabola when we have the formula y equals negative x squared. And then we'll go ahead and graph it. So I'm going to rewrite it so that it looks like x squared equals 4cy. So I'm just going to rewrite it as x squared equals negative y. Right? Just divide by that negative to move it to the other side. So this tells me that 4c is equal to negative 1. So c is equal to negative 1 fourth. So because c is negative, this graph will open down. All right, so now we also know the focus is at 0, negative 1 fourth, because c is 1 fourth. And then the directrix is just the opposite. So the directrix would be positive 1 fourth. So directrix is a line, and it's the opposite. It's positive 1 fourth. Cool. So we found the focus. We found the directrix. We're just going to graph. So I'm going to find those two points to help me graph. So we have 2cc, or negative 2cc, and 2cc. I usually just find one, and then the other is really fast. So negative 2 times negative 1 fourth gives me 1 half. And then c is negative 1 fourth. So my x value is 1 half and my y value is negative 1 fourth. And the other one will just be the opposite. So 2 times negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth stays the same. So the x value is negative 1 half, y value stays negative 1 fourth. And this is enough to graph.
So I'm going to count by smaller numbers since we have fractions. So one, two, three, four. That'll I'll count by fourths. One, two, three, four is one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So I'm going to plot the directrix at one fourth. That'll just be like a dashed line. And then I'll plot the focus at zero, negative one fourth. So these aren't points on the graph, but these have special properties, which we'll see um, when we do applications. And then we know the vertex is at zero, zero. And then we go through negative one half and negative one fourth. And we go through one half and one fourth. Notice those make that focal cord through the focus. And that's my curve. So we've graphed these before. It's going to feel weird at first because we're adding information that's kind of feels invisible, right? That focus and directrix feel like they don't affect the graph. Um, but they do create these special properties that we'll get into. So I'll see you back for the next video.